Okay, so last class period, we talked about something like this. We had the square root of x to the tenth, let's say. Square root of x to the tenth. Do you remember what that is, the square root of x to the tenth simplified? x to the fifth. Okay, very good, x to the fifth. What did you do? How did you rewrite this? You wrote this as what? How'd you get five? Oh, I see. Well, do you remember there was a property you learned that that if you have a to the m divided by n, so when when your exponent is a fraction, you can write this as a radical. And remember, the denominator was your index, right? The denominator is the index, and your numerator was your exponent. So basically, when you had a raised to a fractional power, you wrote this as the nth root of a raised to the m power. That's what you wrote this as the nth root, so your denominator was your index, the nth root of a all raised to the m power. Your numerator was your outside exponent. But we also saw, though, that, that see how I wrote the exponent on the outside? This is the same thing as saying the nth root of a to the m power, where the m is listed under the radical as an exponent. So you can put the, the numerator as an exponent of the outside or inside of the radical. But what we're doing here, though, is going backwards. So you're given a radical. See, you're given a radical. And you want to write it as a rational exponent. So you'll write these as rational exponents. So the rise of rational exponents, you have to remember this. You have to remember that the, the index, n, became what part of that, that exponent? The denominator. And the exponent, m, became what part of that fraction? Numerator. So this became x to the 10th, 10 divided by 2. And what's 10 divided by 2? All right, so that's what we talked about last class period. Just like this one, number two, let's suppose we had the, the um, let's say the cube root, cube root of, of 8, x to the 9th, y to the 15th. What was that equal to? Well, what's the cube root of 8? I mean, this is what you did, right? Well, if you if remember what we did, we wrote this as a cube root of 8 times the cube root of x to the ninth, that's cube root, times the cube root of y to the 15th, right? What was the cube root of 8? Can it simplify that? Can it simplify the square root of 8? Yeah, because 8 is a perfect cube. What number times itself 3 times is 8? 2. Now look at the cube root of, of, cube root of x to the ninth. If I change this to a rational exponent, that becomes x to the 9 divided by what? 3. And what's 9 divided by 3? 3. So that's x cubed. And then we saw, as we went through this, we saw that we could just quickly come up with the answer. What's 15 divided by 3? 5. So that becomes y to the 5th. So there's your answer. 2x to the 3rd times y to the 5th. Okay? Okay. Now, look at number three. Suppose I had uh, the, the uh, square root of x to the um, 11th power. That's not so easy anymore. Why, why is that not so easy as, as the number one that we did? No, because the, 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 uh, the exponent is not divisible by the index. 
Here, 10 was divisible by 2. Is 11 divisible by 2? Now, remember when you talk about is, is something divisible by another number, that means your remainder is 0. Is 11 divisible by 2? No. But I can still simplify this, though. Because my index is 2, right? And my exponent is bigger than or equal to 2, so I can simplify this. Now, here's how you want to think about this. What I would do, see how, how when I did when I did this one, I, um, I simplified because this this exponent was divisible by the index. Think of it this way: what is the largest? And for us right now, we're just going to be dealing with square roots. What is the largest whole number less than eleven that's divisible by two? Ten. <laughs> Ten, right? All right. So, right, rewrite it. The square root of x to the tenth times x. Y'all agree that's, that's x to the eleventh? All right. And just like you did when I gave you those worksheets out, before I gave you those worksheets out, we split it apart. So, that's the square root of x to the tenth times the square root of what? X. And now... You can easily tell me what this is. What's the square root of x to the 10th? X to the 5th, square root of x. There's your answer. You see what you do? That's all you do. You cannot simplify the square root of x because that exponent of x is 1. 1's less than the index. So you're done. Number 4. Right, suppose I had the square root of x to the 27th power. Now at some point, you, 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 won't, you won't need to do all those steps. By the time the final gets here, or by, or by, the, time, by the time the test 4 gets here, you'll be able to do this pretty quickly. Is, is 27 divisible by 2? No. All right, so if you want to think about this, then what's the largest whole number less than 27 that's divisible by 2? 20, 26. 26. So this becomes the square root of x to the 26 times x, right? So it becomes the square root of x to the 26 times the square root of x. And again, you, at some point, you may be able to skip some of these steps. Which of those can I simplify? Square root of x to the 26. What is that? x to the 13th, and then I get the square root of x. Now, someone said, when, when I said it was the largest whole number less than 26 is divisible by 2. Someone said 24. All right, well, let's just look at that. So, so I have the square root of x to the 27th, which she said is x to the 24, but that's not times x, that's times x to what power? The third. Because when you multiply like base, you add exponents, right? Okay, all right. So I get, I get the square root of x to the 24th, times the square root of x cubed, right? What is the square root of x to the 24th? Oh. x to the 12th. Can I simplify the square root of x cubed? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because what's the largest whole number less than 3 that goes into 2? Or that 2 goes into? 2. So this, this right here becomes x squared times x, right? So that becomes x to the 12th times the square root of x squared times x. And then that's just x, right? Oh, square root of x right here, yeah. So that's just x, and what's x times x to the 12th? Square root of x. Okay? But notice all the steps that's involved here. It's always easier to use the, the, the largest exponent possible. All right? Okay, number five. 
So number five, suppose we had this. Number five, suppose we had the square root of x to the eighth, y to the seventh. The square root of x to the eighth, y to the seventh. All right, split it apart. So that becomes the square root of x to the eighth times the square root of what? Y to the seventh. Now, which one of those can, can I deal with right away? I know right away what it is. The one with, with the exponent 8. What's the square root of x to the 8? x to the what? 4. Now, let's go about the square root of y to the 7. What's the largest whole number less than 7 that's divisible by 2? So that's square root of x to the 6. I'm sorry, y to the 6, right? Times y. And then rewrite it, you get x to the fourth, square root of y to the sixth, square root of y. Y'all agree? And what's the square root of y to the sixth? y to the third. So the answer becomes x to the fourth, y to the third, times what? Square root of y. That's the answer. All right. And again, at some point, you may be to skip some steps, but until then, just write them out. All right, number six. Suppose you had the square root of 36, x to the 13th power. The square root of 36, x to the 13th power. Split them apart. Just, just do the steps right now. So, so if you rewrite it, that's the square root of 36 times the square root of x to the 13th. But I know what the square root of 36 is. What's the square root of 36? 6. I get 6. Now let's talk about the square root of x to the 13. What's the largest whole number less than 13 that's divisible by 2? All right. So it becomes x to the 12th times x, right? And so that becomes 6 square root of x to the 12th square root of x. Can I simplify anything here? Square root of x to the 12th, which is x to the 6. I get 6. x to the 6. Square root of x. Okay? All right, let's look at number six, number 7. All right, so listen carefully for number 7 as we do this. All right, we have the square root of 169 x to the ninth, y to the fifteenth. All right, so listen carefully as we do this. You split it apart. So it'll be the square root of 169 times the square root of x to the ninth times the square root of y to the fifteenth. All right. The square root of 69 Square root of 169, no, right away. What is it? 13. All right, let's talk about the square root of x to the ninth. How are you going to rewrite that? Square root of x to the 8 times x. Square root of y to the 15th will be the square root of y to the 14th times y. Okay. Now split this as much as you can if you need to. So this would be 13, square root of x to the 8th. Square root of x, square root of y to the 14th, square root of y. See what I did? Just split them apart. And I'm going to circle the ones I can simplify. Which, which ones can I simplify? Square root of x to the 8th. What's the other one? 14. Square root of y to the 14th. So I get 13. What's the square root of um, x to the 8th? x to the 4th. And what's the square root of y to the 14th? y to the 7th. And now what's left though? Square root of x times the square root of y. All right, now I'm going to say this though. You remember a while ago we did this. We said the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. That's the same thing as saying the square root of what? 6. So the square root of x times the square root of y, you want to write as one square root. Square root of xy. So 13 x to the 4th y to the 7th, square root of xy. Okay? 
And we always tend to put the square root on the end. See how I wrote the square root on the outside? It's always, always tend to do that. All right, let's do one more, and then um, we'll stop. Okay, for this one, let's look at at this. Now, now, this is going to be number eight. We have the square root of twelve x to the twentieth y to the eighth. Okay. All right, so listen carefully. So just like we did number seven, you're going to write this as the square root of twelve. What else? Square root of x to the twentieth, and then the square root of what? Y to the eighth. Okay. Is 12 a perfect square? No. no. So let's go off to the side and figure out what the square root of 12 is. Simplify. What perfect square goes into 12? 4. So 4 times 3, right? And so that's the square root of 4, square root of 3. And what's the square root of 4? So you have 2, square root of 3. Y'all agree that's the square root of 12? Okay. All right. So I'll put that here. So that's 2 square root of 3. Can I simplify the square root of x to the 20th right away? Yeah, it's x to the 10th. What about the square root of y to the 8th? Can I do that right away? y to the 4th. Okay, and you're done. You can leave your answer like this. Okay, but remember a while ago we said we tend to put the square root on the outside at the end. So we would prefer, now remember, if you write like this, it's fine, because remember, multiplication is commutative. The order in which you multiply does not matter. But this is, this is the preferable way to write it. You would say 2 x to the 10th, y to the 4th, times the square root of 3. Okay, that means the same thing as what we just did. But if you write like this, it's no big deal. But this is the one we tend to write it as. All right, so any questions? I, we went through this pretty quickly. It, it's, it, you needed to have learned something from the previous lesson to get through this pretty much. All right, so um, 